Okay, so hi, uh, Don, and I, this is a video that I'm that's just showing off the really early stages of a project that I'm working on that is a hands-on tutorial for the Scuttleverse. And the Scuttleverse is a pretty amazing project. Uh, I'm not going to get into what it is. There will be links in the description, but I suspect if you're watching this, you probably already know what Secure Scuttlebutt is, and this is just around uh, the work that I'm doing to set up this environment. Um, but yeah, I would highly, if you don't know what it is, I, should, I would highly encourage you to go check it out. So I'm, so what I'll do in this video is really just walk through kind of the setup and, and how and why I've set things up this way. Uh, I'm really early in my uh, learning of Secure Scuttlebutt, and I thought that building this <clears throat> would be a really good way for me to both learn and to give me an environment that I could learn on, but also by building a tutorial that it could help potentially help other people that are coming behind me and help them set up an environment and give them an ability to to learn as well. So kind of two birds with one stone thing. Um, so yeah, so what I'll do, uh, this is this is the repo and this is uh, the repo, I've already cloned it down. Now this, uh, the goal for this, is, like I said, is to create a laboratory. I wanna create a laboratory where I have multiple peers on an isolated network that I can poke and prod and debug and, and do things with so that I can learn at the code level what Secure Scuttlebutt's doing. And so I'm using Docker and Docker Compose to do that. And, <clears throat> and so, uh, yeah, this video is really about how that setup works and what you can do with it in the early days. Uh, and this is really for people who probably already know a bit about Secure Scuttlebutt uh, and don't want to go through all the steps of the tutorial, uh, but rather just want to see what's possible and what's capable. And, I, and this is also just for me to remind myself how I've set it up and why and all that good stuff. So uh, this is where we currently are. You can see I don't have any uh, uh, containers. So if I PSA, you can see I don't have any current uh, containers, Docker containers, and I don't I only have one image which is the, the basic Node 6.9 image. I, that's only just gonna save us a bit of time. So that you can tell from the tutorial, the first step is to run docker compose up, and that's going to download, hopefully this won't take too long, but this is going to download <coughs> an image that I've, that I, uh, that's part of this project. While this is downloading and installing, I can actually pop over and show you <coughs> on, on Docker Hub. This is the place where the automated builds happen of this Docker file, and I've done a few already. Uh, but every time I push to the GitHub repo here, the, the, the Docker image that's downloaded from here gets rebuilt each time, which is quite handy, because every time I make a change, uh, even, even though I'm really not changing the Docker file very much at this point, it still gets rebuilt every time, which is, which is nice. And so if we pop back over to here, this is still downloading. Um, <clears throat> I can talk a little bit about a little bit about the the project, but actually it looks like it's about finished. So it should it's extracting. So this is bringing down um, this this image and downloading it, and it's really just a um, this image is built off of. Actually, I think you can just tell from here, it's built off of the the node six point nine image so that's the image i already had installed so it didn't have to download anything in this image and it's only just making these changes and we'll we can have a look at, at this in a moment but if we pop back over here it looks like oh so not only has it downloaded the image but it's also spun it up so it's actually created the it's created the new the containers three new containers for these and it's starting them up so it's now attaching to those. Each of these three containers are called pub, user one, and user two. And the, the, the thinking being that we'll, we could uh, have one pub and then two users, and we can create following relationships, and we can basically set it up however we feel like we need to. And you can see that we're already, we've already connected to those. So that's pretty handy. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. I'm just going to close it so these will stop. And I'll run it over here so that we can actually just have it running. But I thought what we could do is use this window over here to run to run the containers, use this one to go into the container so that we can poke and prod them, and we'll use this window to look at some code. So I'll go ahead and just do the same thing that this just did. Because the container's already started, the, the images are already downloaded, it just spins them up really fast. And so we'll pop over here, and I guess the first thing to look at is 
the, well, maybe the fact that we can actually go into these. So we have the containers running in this window. Down here, I can, I've written this little script, and I'll just have a look at it to show it to you. It's pretty simple. Um, this little script just does a Docker exec uh, interactive on whatever I send to it. So if I put pub as the, the container that I want to go into, it'll run bin bash on that pub, and boom, you can see here that we're root in pub. So now we're on the command line inside of inside of just that one container. So we have three containers running, three machines running, and we're on the inside of this one. And it drops us into this Scuttlebot folder, which is the uh, which is Scuttlebot, which it's it actually it'd probably be helpful if we just looked over here and looked at the Docker file. And you can see that what the Docker file does after it downloads this image is it does a clone on Scuttlebot. Uh, and then it sets up a working directory for where we're cloning into and then changes the SSB cap file inside the lib folder. So we have a second one that we've created um, here. And all this says is this is just a different cap file. And what that means is that this is has a different key to the normal secure scuttlebot network has its own key that we all share to communicate on the network. This is a completely different one. I got cheeky and just basically it's the base 64 of welcome to the secure scuttlebot tutorial. <laughs> so this, so these machines are running on a, effectively a, a separate network. And so that's what, that's what that does. Uh, and then we set up a couple of servers. You can see over here there's a debug server and a run server script, and those will be run based on how we want to, how we run the environment up here, and I'll, I'll get into that in a second. After that, it just does an npm install, and I don't know why I haven't dived into this yet, but it seems like I have to do two npm installs. Something, maybe it's with level DB, I can't remember, but for some reason I have to do it twice because I found out that once I got into here, if I ran npm install again, it fixed the problem that I was having in the beginning, but I'll look into that later. Okay, so that's the Docker file. <coughs> While we're looking at this, we may as well go ahead and have a look at the, the Docker Compose. Uh, this is the file that uses this image. We are using the same exact image three times, so all three of these peers are identical. Uh, well, with the exception of a few things. Uh, I've changed their host name. I've changed their container name. As you can see, they're using the same image. and the command that's run by default, I base it on whether there is a, a pub action environment variable. Uh, if there isn't, then it just uses run, which causes run server to run, which is exactly what all three of these containers are doing now, is they've just done run server. But if I set up pub action as an environment variable and set it to say debug, then it'll run debug server, and we'll look at that in a minute. I set up some environment variables. These environment variables are available over here. And you can see that if I just, if I echo uh, SSB config, this is just making it easier for me to run uh, the bin.js. Uh, so it's just, as we'll see in a minute, this is just setting up. Um, yeah, it's just setting it up to be easier. I have all three running on port 8118. And so because, and because they're all running on the same port and they're on the same network, that's why they've automatically connected to each other, which is, uh, yeah, which was quite handy. Uh, I have a, the server ports are all the same, but the debug ports are all different because we may want to debug these independently or actually at the same time. We may want to debug the server in pub at the same time we want to debug the server for user one and then see what that looks like. Uh, and we can do that. Uh, and then set up the host. The nice thing about the way I've set this up is because you would expect that we're going to be building, we're going to be rebuilding these containers all the time. Uh, we won't. We don't want to have to rebuild the keys every time. And so what I've done is I've set up a volume so that in our main folder here, I can I can see here that I have this pub user one and user two. And if I come over here and do uh, an L on shared, we get the same thing. Whoops! Now that we've created those, that's not going to look so good. So, yeah, that's not going to look good either. Let's just do that. Good. So you can see that there are those three folders. And the way I've set it up is that each of those containers are putting their .ssb file, which contains the database, their secret keys. Actually, you can see some of that here. 
um, it's inside of their own specific folder. So their blobs, all, their database and everything, their, their secrets are all in a separate folder, but they're not inside the container. They're inside a folder on my host machine. That makes it quite handy. So I have control over blowing away their databases and starting from afresh if I really want to. Uh, but otherwise, I can just keep shutting down these containers and spinning them back up, and they'll, all their database and, and their keys and everything will remain consistent, which is really nice. I think that's I think that's mostly it actually. Um, let's I don't think there was anything else in the in the Docker file um, in the in here. And the ports. Oh, and I exposed the ports. So I have to expose the debug ports from outside of these. So each of these containers are making their debug ports available, but not their server ports. So they each can get two. You can see they're, they all get a separate IP address. They're all on the same port. So they can see each other, but we can't see their server port from outside of the containers. But we, they are exposing their debug ports. So let's have a look at what the debug ports do. Um, Close that, I'll pop over here, and what can I do? Oh, I'm, so one of the things you can do is we can we can go ahead and run a command. So here I can say bin, oh, I'm not in the right folder. Let's go back to Scuttlebot. And we can, um, <laughs> I obviously didn't try this before I rec started recording. So uh, from here we can do a bin. <clears throat> and I'm going to use this uh, SSB config just so that I don't have to type in the port. The, 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 because we're using atypical ports, we have to choose the port number and, and you can see the, uh, in the folder for where the path is so that it will know that we're, that we're talking to the right server. And that, and what do I want to do? How about a, actually I probably should have done this here. Who am I? And that, and we'll just pipe that to shared and put it on id.json. And so I'm taking a who am I and I'm pipe, I'm pushing it into a file, a new file. Oops, that's not gonna work. We want this to go into where under pub. So we wanna put pub's ID into the pub folder of shared. And we can do that. And if we pop over here and look at shared pub, we can see that the id.json's there. And I've written a little script just to make it easier. So if I do uh, a copy, here? No, it's not. It is here. So if, if over here we're in our root folder and I do a copy, um, copy, uh, SSH copy ID. Is that the one? I can't remember the name of the file now. It is copy ID of. So if I copy ID of and I say pub, it will auto, I have JQ and xclip installed and I've just written a little script that that puts uh, you can see uh, we'll just do a copy ID of uh, we'll just look at that real quick but what all it all it does is it's just a little shell script that goes into the shared folder of pub grabs the ID runs it through JQ and then runs xclip on it so that we can pull out just the ID I felt this was something that we probably would end up doing a lot of so on the host machine there's just a little script that will that we'll, we'll go ahead and put this that'll put that on the clipboard. So that makes it makes it quite easy. Um, okay, good. Let's let's do this. I'm gonna exit out of that of that terminal. I'm gonna close down each of the containers and this time I'm going to turn on debugging for user one. So we'll run the other two the other two servers normally and we'll I don't think I need to do anything over over here. But over here I'm gonna say user one uh, action equals debug and then I'm going to docker compose up and this time you'll see that it's just going to start pub and user two normally but it's going to recreate user one and that's because it's now going to run the debug server and actually over here I can uh, show you run and debug server and these are pretty straightforward. They're really just, um, so this is being run as the main command inside the, the, the server. So this is running the server command. 
and it's running it with the right path and with the right host. But the difference is debug is also setting up double dash inspect, which is available in the later versions of V3, V8, and setting up the, de the debug port with debug break. So it'll break on the very first line of code. And yeah, and that's just running server here with the right, um, the right port. So that's what, that's what that's doing. And now if what you'll notice is up here, when we ran user one, it's actually going to spit out this URL because of this inspect on on 91 or 90, 92, 929, I think it is. And I can copy this to my clipboard and then pop over to here, paste in the URL into Chrome, has to be Chrome. And you'll notice that we're broken on a breakpoint. So we're broken on the first line of code in the server. And I can pop down and say, set a breakpoint here and run it to the breakpoint. And as we do that, we'll see, as we, as we run more code and more of these modules get loaded, uh, it's loading more and more of the, of the node modules. So if we say run it down to, this, this has run server, so we should run into some of this stuff. Let's run it down to here. And now you can see that even more even more codes available to us. So it, it does. It's unfortunate that the code won't find its way into the debugger until it's been loaded and, and parsed, uh, because it'd be nice to be able to set a breakpoint ahead of time. But it's not too bad. I mean, of course, you can start stepping into code here, and start stepping over code, and really just getting a sense of of what the code's doing. Um, you know, through normal debugging, which I find really, really helpful uh, to be able to understand a code base and to be able to step through it like this. Really, I, the metaphor I use is it really turns the lights on so you can see everything going on. Now, I'm still struggling personally a little bit with all of this pull stream stuff <laughs> and all of the drains and the sources and, and the way that that processes is still, it's still a bit much uh, where I am in my learning of this stuff, but this debugging is certainly helping. And so being able to set breakpoints and step through the call stack and so forth really, really helps. So yeah, so that's part of why I've set this up. And the goal is for each of these, for as you go through the tutorial and you're copying the feeds and you can follow feeds and you can see things. So far, the tutorial only has things that you're just doing on the command line. But ultimately, we'll be writing code. We'll be... Uh, publishing code, pushing code into the containers and running it and then running code from the outside. Maybe I'll expose the ports and, uh, and so that we can actually uh, hit them with clients that are sitting outside the container. That would be interesting. So that's the idea. That's the, the current, the current um, status that I'm, yeah, that I have going on. But it's turned out to be really useful and, and helpful. So yeah, I'd love any feedback. I'm certainly no Docker guru by any means. So if I'm doing something silly in the in the Docker file, I'd love to, or the Docker compose file, if there's, I know there's, it seems like there's a lot of duplication. I've tried to reduce it a little. But if there's things that you see that I'm doing that could be improved, either with secure scuttlebutt or with Docker or anything else, love to hear it. So yeah, hopefully this was useful or at least interesting. Uh, see you next time.